Yo, what is up, guys? I thought there was only 14 rounds in the day two Swiss, uh, or 14 rounds was the max number of rounds. It turns out there's a 15th round, and we got James Taylor versus John Ank here. Zoro Garb, Mirror. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. We got uh, James going first. Opening egg has the Bridget, gonna get Zerua. And Zerua, Zerua, Suda Wudo. I think you definitely want to have access to Garb here if you're James. So I'd like to see him get the Ditto. There's the Ditto. Yeah, if you go first, you don't really. And he's got the red card on top of everything. So great, uh, great opening here from James. <clears throat> uh, yeah, if you're going second, that's when you want to get the Suda Wudo. Going first, you want to get the Garb. Uh, so we see the four draw here from John. Not too bad, though. He's got a Zerua and a N. Throws the down to Rua, Zerua, Klefki plays N. I kind of would have liked to have seen him put a DC on a Zerua, maybe. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Could have put Zerua on DCE. The chance of it getting knocked out next turn. Eh, I could get knocked out next turn, I guess. Yeah, I guess not. No need. There's the Trubbish from John. Uh, could have got a Zorak, but you definitely want access to Trubbish yourself as John. So no Sudowoodo is coming out here early on. Um, I don't know if John plays Sudowoodo. Uh, we do know. James does and he got ended into double Zorak. Colris Floatstone Skyfield. Holy moly. Definitely don't need to put the Skyfield down. Definitely want to see the Floatstone on the active here. And I think I just want to see him go with uh Colris immediately here for eight. I don't see a reason to really play anything else down. Klefki, uh Klefki's fine, yeah. Actually, yeah, you do want kind of want to set up the turn two garb here if you're James. You can kind of snowball. Uh, the mirror match can get kind of snowballed out of control for one player pretty soon. Um, if someone just goes if the player who goes first just sets up turn two garbage starts taking a knockout so yeah i like the clefki here uh look for the turn two garbador there's trash lance that's not the right garbador um haven't fully seen all his cards though almost there there's nine and we should see him start trading here trade away bridget for the first one gets the dce so at the very least he will be knocking out the orangaroo here um another trade coming up here gets rid of a sycamore <clears throat> uh, not a whole ton of great options. He has the dowsing machine, so he could dowsing machine for Ultra Ball. Uh, actually, I don't know if he has access to an Ultra Ball. I think it's actually just going to be knockout uh, Orangaroo here for James, which is actually not even that great here. Um, you definitely do it, I think. I think you definitely take the knockout. I actually would have hated to see him just kind of like leave the egg active, actually, the more I think about it. Because um, you're really opening, up, opening it up for John to kind of like take the lead on the prize exchange here um he has a pretty solid hand here we see the ditto he's got an ultra ball so he can get a zorark um and then mm, yeah ditto should definitely come down choice man should definitely come active not gonna ultra ball for a zorark he wants to hold on to the dowsing machine i don't actually think i like that here from john i think i would have liked to have seen him ultra ball for a zorark for sure here as john um maybe even ultra ball for shaman and draw five and then play chorus no pseudo widow no ability lock arm yeah, so I actually don't like that play from John here. I think I would like to have seen him be a little bit more aggressive about looking for the one shot here on the Zork. I would like to have seen him go Ultra Ball for Shaman for five here. Ultra Ball, get rid of the Ability Lock Zork. I do believe John does play two Super Rods, so, uh, or the Trash Lance Zork. So discarding a, a Trash Lance, Trash Lance Garb, not Zork. Discarding a Garb here isn't that big of a deal. And then the Dazzling Machine is really good, sure. Uh, I think you'd rather make sure you knock out this uh, Zork of James's though. So I definitely would like to have seen him go Ultra Ball for... Shaman set up for five, um, but we do have a pretty good hand here from John. DCE, Skyfield, two Zorks. First trade here. He does have two Skyfield, so he still has the option here. There's an egg. Gonna see that get traded away here, I'm sure, uh, from John. Um, I don't think he, he's not, doesn't quite have the one shot. Oh, that's pretty close. I think he has it now. Uh, especially if he can combine this with an ability lock arb. Uh, he can definitely take out this Zorark here of James's if he wants. Doesn't have his own pseudo wudo or anything like that though, so he's not gonna be able to really stop James from probably getting the return knockout. Um, I think James even has the uh, what's it called in his hand, the stand in Zorak. But we see uh, John and not committing for the one shot. I'm pretty sure he had the cards to do it in his hand. Instead, he's just gonna punch James's Zorak, uh, which James can actually punish pretty hard here. Uh, he can either respond with a Skyfield and then one shot John's Zorak, um, or Guzma knock out something off the bench, or uh, Ace Arola. So James has a lot of ways to do stuff. The big thing here is that if he does go for the Skyfield one-shot, John is then hitting into an already damaged Zorak, which really isn't 
like you hit it once and now you you're hitting it again after just one shot you so i th i think i would like to have seen john commit to filling his board and knocking out the zorak especially when he's on the back foot down by the one prize um and it is just one prize and, and then you could i mean you can be like well he could just run three zorak gx's in a row but then it makes it because james has already drawn one prize it makes it hard for john to run a stand-in zorak into one of james's zorak gx's at any point into the game um so yeah he has a sky field he has an egg Maybe he didn't quite have enough Pokemon. Maybe he was missing one Pokemon. He has Egg Egg, Wobbuffet. Oh, maybe he, I think he was actually off, actually off by one Pokemon here. Uh, John was. But he could have Dowsing for Ultra Ball, maybe? Maybe he doesn't have Ultra Ball in this Kabral. So maybe John was actually off by one Pokemon here, actually. Um, I think actually maybe John was off by a Pokemon from taking the knockout here. Um, so back over to James, setting up his trades here. I think I would trade the Oranguru here. Shaman's also fine. Um... They're both pretty useless, not gonna lie. He has access to Colrus. He finally got a Via Seeker, so I think he's eyeing up his Colrus, and I think he's gonna go ahead and just use it. Maybe commit the- I would like to see him commit the Choice Band to the active here. Uh, he's definitely thinking about it. Yeah, getting a one-shot here as James on the Zork that's already damaged onto uh, John's Zork is actually just a huge. It'd be such a huge knockout here if James is able to take this knockout. Um, he's used one trade, yeah. He used one trade, yeah. Huge knockout here if James is able to here on John's Sword Arc. Because um, it really just throws... It puts John so far behind. Standard Zorak isn't a great answer because James Zork, it would just even out James's prizes. And then he has to just take one more GX knockout and he wins the game from there. Um, so yeah. Really big turn here for James. This game is pretty much over, I think, if James is able to take this knockout. Big thing he needs to find here is the Skyfield. Finally... Ooh, Battle Compressor is super good here for James. There's the Skyfield. This should be a knockout for sure on James's side. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so we should see the Battle Compressor. Oh, and he's got the Standard Zorak. Uh, yeah, that will probably won't be relevant for a turn or two. But in a turn or two, it'll be super relevant to uh, deal with a Zorak that John will probably use to one-shot one of James's Zorks. I would definitely like to maybe see that that'll just become... We definitely want to see another Zorua come down here for James for sure. Uh, he's using Battle Compressor here. Getting rid of Egg. Not sure what the problem is here. Okay, there doesn't seem to be one. <laughs> okay, getting rid of Egg. Looks like he's eyeing up the Delinquent. And then probably get rid of that Faba or that End. You're about to draw two prizes. End isn't going to be great later on. Uh, the later the game goes from here. So I'd like to see him get rid of the End, probably. Faba's probably has more use than End. If you don't put a Faba, remove a tool off a of Garbodor of John's, potentially. Um, looks like he's eyeing up his Arua. So I think that means he probably has a Rescue Stretcher in hand. Um, so I don't hate that. Um, now he's going back to the Faba. So that makes me think maybe he doesn't. Uh, but I think End is worse than Faba here. Going with an Ultra Ball. I definitely don't like discarding Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is so good. I don't know why you discard the Ultra Ball. Definitely would like to have seen the Fava or the End get discarded over the Ultra Ball. I don't know why he would discard the Ultra Ball here. I'm actually kind of confused by that one. I don't like the Ultra Ball discard at all. Uh, you want to find Zerulas here this turn. And then potentially more Zerulas in the future. Um, see the Skyfield come down. I expect to see a Propagation trade here. He's gonna. He's eyeing up a Wonder Tag. So that's definitely why he left the Fava or slash N in the deck. Because he's going to take one of them out of the deck. So I like this. So he's gonna probably ultra ball away that away that with the egg. I think I want like I said, I want to see the N go. I don't think the N is very good. Ace Roll is also not great, but I'm pretty sure N is the worst <laughs> out of them. Um, you're not looking to use it. If you find a Via Seeker, it's pretty much always gonna be for Chorus. Um, but if you don't find a Via Seeker and you find something like the Fava or the Ace Roll, you could potentially put it to use. Um, so I'd like to see him prop trade or uh prop ultra ball here. He's gonna go with the communication, get rid of the stand-in Zorak. Uh, hopefully for Zerua. That's what I want to see, anyways. He's eyeing up a Trubbish. Eyes up to Roblox Suda Wudo. Roblox okay. But I think when you're ahead here as James, you don't care if John fills his bench, because then you just have Stand in Zorak to be to follow up from there. So I don't think you really need Roblox Suda Wudo Pseudo Wudo right here if you're James. Especially when this your current yeah, I don't like the roadblock grab at all here from James. Because if you're attacking with this current Zorak, which it looks like he is, um, John needs so little on his turn to knock it out that he John has a turn to like set up for when he actually needs to go ability lock garb to turn off pseudo wudo. Um, so I don't like the pseudo widow grab here from James at all. I would have much rather seen him just like set up more for the late game here. Uh, seen him grab a, what, a, a, a Zerua, I think. Like, I think I would just like to have seen him grab a Zerua here. I don't actually, I don't actually like that pseudo widow grab at all. It doesn't do anything because John's turn is so simple. John just needs to find a DC, knock out the Sorak, set up for the turn after. So the turn after is where he has to worry about the pseudo widow. See, John really has two turns to deal with the pseudo widow. So yeah, this, I don't, I don't like, like just, if you're so far ahead at this point as James, if you just set up to win the game from here, you can't lose the game, like just set up to win. I, I don't know. This feels unnecessary. Like just 
It just feels bad. Um, he's going with a prop trade here. Would definitely like to see him play the Ultra Ball before he props trades. Um, the one that he has in hand. Ultra Ball away the N plus an egg and grab his Arua. Or a Garb. Um, does he want to set up Garb here? I don't think that's really necessary. He has the Klefki, so he can do that cute lock on the turn. Um, now he's going with the Ultra Ball. Definitely want to see him Ultra Ball away this N. Um, oh, he has two Skyfields here. Ultra Ball away the end, please. You're gonna about to go down to... Please Ultra Ball away the end. You're about to go down to three prizes. You don't want any in your deck anymore. Skyfield could still potentially be good. Especially on this turn for John, when John is gonna knock out your Zork with a fresh Zork, meaning he could just field blow your Skyfield because he doesn't need it to take his knockout. So you need Skyfields here, James. You have to be the Skyfield initiator on the next turn. Um, because the one of the best plays for John is to literally go DCE like n ability lock garb knock out your zork your n is going to be useless your skyfield is not so i definitely don't want to see him get rid of the uh skyfield here definitely like to see him get rid of the end he's gonna go with the ability lock garb i'm just checking yeah going with the ability lock garb Should see the second Ultra Ball come down here. Hopefully to get a Sudowoodo or a Zerua this time. Thinking about it, has the Ultra Ball. I want to see him grab a, uh, a Zerua here. He might Ultra Ball it away, which doesn't make any sense to me. I would like to see him probably get rid of the the Floatstone. Floatstone's not very good. Like you don't have to be the initiator here, James. You have to be the responder. Get rid of the Garb. Oh no, it gets, gets a Zerua. Okay, finally we're seeing a Zerua. Once again, I think the Sudowoodo was... Uh, made no sense. I just want to go back to that. I don't think this is grabbing Sudowoodo. I would like to have seen like another Zerua. Or even a Trubbish, actually. And then you could potentially turn this Ditto into a Zorark. And then have a Trubbish for later as well. Um, three, four, five. Yep, it's got eight bench Pokemon. It takes the egg back. It's going to be Ability Lock Garb. Clef key to it. Ability Locking John for the turn. Egg comes down and then knock out the Zork of John's. So here we go. John does send up the Zork now. This is exactly what I said would happen. Gets rid of the Skyfield. And then once again, James has to be the Skyfield initiator. So I really did not like that he got rid of a Skyfield there. Um, I should see Lele go as well. Uh, yep, so here we are. John is going to knock this out. All he needs is a DCE to take the knockout here. Ideally, followed up with an N and an ability lock guard, but we'll see if he actually has that. Um, gonna be immediate with the chorus, so answer is no, he does not have that. Um, Ditto will probably try and become a Zorak GX, um, and then looking for, like I said, the ability lock arb. Big thing he needs here is a DCE. Can worry about the end on the next turn if he has to. That hand, it did not look like it has a DCE. Well, not quite. <laughs> yeah, not a great hand here from John. Definitely want to see him thin out with the Ultra Ball. Probably go grab a Zerua. Yeah, definitely want to see him grab a Zerua here. I definitely want to see his Arua grab here as John. It's the Ultra Ball. I can't imagine what else he would grab here. There are the three DCEs he was looking for. Oh, Shaman works here, yeah. Shaman set up for those few extra cards. Yeah, I like the Shaman grab a little bit better. Uh, he's got two Ability Lock Garbs in hand. Two Ability Lock Garbs in hand, I believe. So he's got that uh, as well. I definitely would like to see him Ability Lock Garb James here. Um, try and give himself... Uh, uh, try. He needs to try and buy a turn or two where James does not just get a one-shot. So there's a communication... Um, I think he's just going to see him grab the Shaman here again. No? I think he got rid of a Shaman. Maybe he got rid of an Ability Lock Garb and still has a Shaman in hand. We'll see here in just a second. Oh, looks like he got rid of one of the Ability Lock Garbs. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then set up for five. One, two, three, four, five. Got the DCE. I don't think he's traded at all yet. Uh, he is under Sudowoodle Lock. I would like to see him... He's going with the trades here. I'd like to see him set up probably another Zerua here. Um... Ultra Ball for Azarua and then Klefki to the Ability Lock Arb. Get some eggs back. Oh, he's just going to go with that immediately. Has an Ultra Ball in hand. It definitely could have gotten Azarua. I don't like this play at all from John. Maybe even count the items and maybe go for a Trubbish. I think he noticed that actually immediately that he didn't prop to use this Ultra Ball. Now, now he has to get rid of a basic Pokemon, which you definitely don't want to do. Yeah, so definitely a mistake here from John. Um, I don't know what James's, ta James's uh, items are at, um, so I don't know if he should go for a Trubbish or a Zerua here, but I'm assuming it's not quite enough for a uh, Trash Lance to one-shot a Zorak. So I definitely would like to see him at least go for a Zerua here. He definitely should have propagated and got rid of Sycamore and Egg, but now he's forced to get rid of a Tapu Lele, which you definitely don't want to do here as John, uh, but I don't think you really have a choice anymore yet. Definitely a mistake on John's part not to propagate there. 
Uh, there we go. Now he has to go end up getting rid of the Lele. Still gets the Zerua, which is the important part. The Zerua, the Zerua is really important here. Potentially respond with a stand in Zorak. Ideally, that's the response here from John. Um, and there we go. Right is beating for the knockout on James Zorak. All right, now it comes to James. And once again, we're coming into the turn like exactly like I thought it would play out. John got the field blower, got rid of the sky field. James on his turn before discarded a sky field for what reason i don't know and now he needs a sky field to be able to knock out the zork of john's um thankfully he doesn't need to activate ability lock guard but because john does not have a pseudo of his own but uh really put himself in a worse spot than he needed to be for no reason uh once again that n is still in hand i don't know why uh there's the blower on the cleft key uh he has dc choice man so we should see both those come down uh, he also has a dowsing machine, um, which could get a chorus here. If he had the Skyfield in hand, he could use that to get a chorus. Um, but now I think he's going to have to dowsing machine for... I definitely would like to see him discard the N in this as well. Oh, he is going for the Skyfield. Um, looks... Is he going to go for an N for three here? I definitely would have... If he's going to go for this play, you definitely should have traded first. Because um, if you trade into a Via Seeker... Then it can completely change to everything. But it looks like he's just going to commit to the end. I definitely don't like him committing to end here. I would definitely have liked to have seen him... Well, I guess he only needs a basic Pokemon, right? Because he has two eggs. Uh, okay. This is fine. I'm actually fine with just committing to... Uh, yeah. He should see a basic here off of three. But you want to see so much more than that. Yeah, I actually don't like this play from James. Because even if you just... If you find just the basic, which is he did find, which is what he at least needs... Um, you still need to somehow draw a prize on your next turn. So I like to, would have liked to have seen him go with Colrus and set up a little bit further than, than what he's actually currently setting up. I would have liked to have seen him trade first. You can draw the basic there. You could also just draw a Colrus, and using a Colrus here I feel like is way better than an N. Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that play from James. Definitely would like to see him prop trade before he just commits to play in the N. Unfortunately, he does go with just the N. Um, and he is going to be able to get the knockout, but now he has so much less to work with um set up and play well he gets the zork gonna see another prop trade so maybe he's just gonna just get exactly what he needs oh and the bursting balloon to put on the card so never punished here he got it all uh off the end to three <laughs> works out in the end here for james and he's gonna get the knockout on the zork of john down to one prize over to john john sends up his ability lock garb that's a little curious he has a float stone in hand, but that means you have to commit the float stone before you use any supporters. Uh, DCE to John puts DCE on his own Zork. Um, so he's definitely looking for the stand in uh, knockout. He didn't trade, so definitely a mistake here by John for not trading. Definitely should have prop traded. Um, I don't think he prop traded. I'm almost positive he did not prop trade. Definitely should have prop traded before. Uh, committing to this end or committing to the ability lock because you could have traded into the standard Zorak, so definitely a mistake on John's part. Um, pretty big one actually at that. Uh, but is, this is the end to one here, so if he does find the standard Zorak, it's uh, very likely John can make a comeback here. There's four. Uh, I don't see a, pot, a way to do it. Well, no, I think he has the communication in the discard pile actually. So yeah, we'll see the dowsing to get rid of the sky field and the float zone communication away the Zorak for the standard Zorak. And then, oh, looks like Stand and Zorak surprised. And it looks like John did not check, definitely did not check for that earlier on. Uh, wow. Yep, that's going to be a rough hit there for John. Um, definitely something you want to check for in your prizes when playing this matchup. It's such an important card in the mirror match, the Stand and Zorak. Yeah, I don't see a way for John to actually possibly win this game with the Stand and Zorak prize. If it wasn't prized, it would, it would just come down to what the last two cards that James has. It's going to be a Paralyzing Gaze, Tails, uh, and James will take this one. Uh, yeah. So I think a couple major mistakes um, by John. Uh, not checking the prizes for the Stand and Zork. A huge, a huge Pokemon in the mirror match. Uh, it's maybe the biggest Pokemon in the mirror match is the Stand and Zork. Um, besides like prizing all your Zork GXs or all your Garbodors or something. Prize knowing if you whether or not you prize your Stand and Zork is a pretty big deal. Um, definitely a mistake there from John. Uh, James, I think we saw, I mean, there was a couple mistakes from James as well on his side, uh, not keeping the sky field. I think when he played the end there, instead of trading first, um, John also missed a trade on his side at the end there. Uh, what I, either way that we're going into game two, uh, a couple mistakes on both sides. John will be going first. I assume let's go ahead and skip ahead here. See if we can't get to where they're starting. 
Yep, here we go. Battle Compressor, turn one from John. Get rid of Egg Chorus Guzma. Iron up prop plus Ultra Ball. Don't get rid of Sand and Zorak. Ideally not. I can't see the rest of his hand though. Skyfield Super Rod DCE. Uh, so he might be Super Rodding it back into the deck immediately. Um, it's going to be a for an Ultra Ball for a Lele for a Bridget. So we should should see Zerua Zerua. Probably Trubbish. Yep, there's the Trubbish. Um, I don't think John plays the Roadblock Pseudo Wudo. So this is definitely, that definitely gives James a slight edge for sure. Uh, he has Zorak, Zorak Colrus DCE. Skyfield Super Rod, I think, as his last cards here as John. I actually think as John, I would like to have seen him Ultra Ball away the Super Rod instead of the Stand in Zorark. Because you have so many ways to find the Stand in Zorark, and you kind of don't want to play. Like, play, you, like, Stand in Zorark is so important to having your deck at pretty much all times or have access to, and there's a ton of ways to find it through like Ultra Ball and uh, communication and stuff, but you want access to it. Um, See, I don't actually like that play there from John. I would like to prefer to have seen him keep that in the hand for an option um, and then hopefully get it back into the deck with a Colrus for later um, as opposed to discarding her. Definitely, I think I definitely would like to have seen him discard the Super Rod instead. Uh, we see a Wonder Tag off the start here from James. Ooh, a red card as well from 4 to 4 here for John. Float Zone active. And then it's going to be a Colrus for 7. So actually a DCE here for James's tail. Uh, James's Lele to knock out this ditto is actually a really big deal. Once again, it does the same thing where James draws the first prize. It makes it awkward for the stand-in play from John, but makes his stand-in uh, stand play later on super clean uh, for James, that is. Uh, we see pretty decent cards here. It looks like he's got a draw supporter on in the Sycamore. Uh, he's got an Ultra Ball. Can get a go ahead and grab another Zerua here. And he's got a Pokemon Communication, which you ideally want to save, I think. We could see the Ultra Ball here for... Uh, he looks like he's eyeing up the Shaman. I would definitely like to see him grab another Zerua as well. So it's probably going to be Ultra Ball for Zerua, Communication for Shaman, or the other way around works as well. Uh, he is going to grab the Shaman here, and then I do expect to, expect to see the Communication come out here. Get rid of the Trash and Lance Orc. I don't want to see the Choice Band go down yet, I don't think. Um, oh, wait, he, yeah, that's right, Pseudo Widow. If you play the Pseudo Widow, you should probably grab the Pseudo Widow here. Block up John's bench, especially after red carding him, meaning it's limits his options for actually drawing out of a potential dead hand. He can't play down Shaman. He can't play down uh, Lele. Um, so it definitely limits his options there to draw out of a potential dead hand. Um, so he's thinking about the choice ban. I'm not a huge fan of this because if it gets field blower, then you're down a choice ban. I think he, they they both only play two choice band because um, they are playing the trash on Lanch build. Um, so you got to find room for those cards somewhere. So I think they both are on the two choice band. And we do see the DC grab here from James. I like him being aggressive about trying to find this. Um, Sudowoodo means a little bit less now because he is taking a knockout here. But if he had whiffed the knockout, Sudowoodo definitely could have done a lot of a lot of work. Uh, we see a VS Seeker top deck here from John, though. So it's not too devastating. A red card of his own, which could be very devastating. And then, yeah, the VS Seeker for the Chorus. Um, so John, John definitely looking for the Skyfield Garbodor uh, knockout here on James's Lele, he can't let James get another turn of where where he just punches into a GX Pokemon without knocking it out as John. You definitely need to start taking the knock the knockouts aggressively. Don't give your opponent a chance to do what you should have do what should you hopefully hopefully could get done on your turn. Um looking at John's hand, it's not particularly great. He's got the basic Pokemon, he's got the DCE, just needs the Skyfield, has a Shaman as well, but he can't put it down. Um I think he has an egg in the discard pile. He did go for a prop trade, so I'm hoping he did. Yep, he does have an egg in the discard pile. Uh, he has an Ultra Ball, so he can grab another egg here and then prop trade again. So I would like to see him go prop Ultra Ball away the Sycamore, it looks like. And it looks like that's what he's about to do. He also has the, the Ability Lock Guard ready to go. So that could come down and definitely shut down James for a turn or two. Um, even if he whiffs the one shot, hopefully by himself some time there. I don't know what he's thinking about so hard here. He pretty much has a perfect setup as far as I'm concerned uh, to continue for here. He's taking his time, though. There's the prop Ultra Ball. There we go. There's nothing else to really think about. You need the basic Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon actually are a big resource in this matchup. Um, you can actually really easily start to run out of Pokemon and then not be able to take one shots anymore. All right, finally, see him grab the Zorark. Oh, yeah, he can't evolve the Zerua on the right, I believe. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. He just can't evolve one of the Zeruas. It doesn't matter which one he doesn't evolve, really. He just can't evolve one of them. Um, so, yeah. Boom, Zorark. And then we should see a prop trade because they are the same card, so it really doesn't matter. 
That's not a sky field, but it's not that big of a deal. I, I still think he's in a fine spot here. I'm pretty sure he has ability lock guard plus float stone and a DCE. So he's two shot in the Lele. He's got James under the ability lock, hopefully making it hard for him to draw into too much on his turn. And then hopefully he can start to snowball a little bit of a lead from here. Uh, also going to get the clef key down. Thinking about that. Uh, Zeru is definitely better here, um, I think. I don't, not, yeah, I don't understand the Klefki bench here from John. If the, I mean, I guess it is like if the float stone gets field blowered, uh, Lele gets bumped by the pseudo Wudo, and then you can go Klefki to Garbodor, then bench Zeru down that turn. I guess, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I guess I like that. That's fine. Um, and then you still get to, get to utilize the Klefki, I guess, and use it as like pseudo hex there. Yeah, that's cool. All right, over to James. Hand is not great, uh, but he does have the dowsing machine for the chorus, so that's a start. And uh, yeah, we could definitely see this this game kind of mirror the first one where James takes the first prize. This time it was on the Ditto. John follows up with whiffing the knockout on the GX Pokemon of James. Here he hit the Lele instead of the Zork, and then James has the DCE choice band just like last game, and we could just see him get a big knockout uh, following up on uh, this this turn right here. Uh, he's gonna go for the chorus for ten. Yep, Chorus for 10. He needs Skyfield, three basic Pokemon. Uh, if he gets a Field Blower, he's got access to eggs, access to trade. Uh, so it's definitely very doable here for James. And yeah, it's kind. this game is kind of mirroring the first one. Like I said, uh, James took the first prize. John unable to respond to take out the knockout on the GX Pokemon of James. Um, and then James kind of snowballed from there on the first game. Let's see if he can do it again here in the second game uh, as he draws these 10 cards off the Chorus see a dce there's the field blower but i don't see any zorark there's the sky field there's a zorark so i think we're literally about to see the exact same thing happen here um and this is one of the reasons pseudo widow is actually so important in this matchup if, if john had a pseudo widow in play james could not field blower this float zone and get access to the eggs access to the trades he would have to draw everything off this colors for 10 which is way less likely than him being able to field blower it than him just than him being able to get access to all the cards after he gets a field blower so it like really uh opens up james's options here john i don't think like i said i don't think john plays the pseudo so john not playing the pseudo auto makes the matchup way easier for james here so yeah like i said if he had field blower this all of a sudden his bench would be limited to four um, he'd have to either get his own garb on that ditto he'd also lose a pokemon in play um, which could be the difference maker there's a prop trade one two but now he's gonna be able to get a, a zerua down i'm pretty sure he has enough pokemon to be able to get a, hopefully another zerua down here with this ultra ball um and then just kind of snowball from here uh he definitely has the pokemon here he's eyeing up the sky field definitely would like to see him play the ultra ball first check his options out of his deck there we go he's definitely gonna do that now there's the prop ultra ball it away with the faba even has another ultra ball if he wants to go with another ultra ball gonna go ahead and commit the sky field zerua comes down uh i think he might have to use both ultra balls here i think he only has access to one egg so uh ultra ball these two away i wonder if we'll just grab the other egg here nah i probably want to see him grab another zerua zerua or trubbish um, I think you just want another Zorua here, though. He's eyeing up the Zorak. I hope he has enough Pokemon if he goes for that Zorak here. He might have two eggs in the discard pile, actually. I would like to see him just commit to get the, uh, to get the knockout, though, and get a Pokemon. Alright, he's going for the Zorak. Um, I, I'm hoping this means he has two eggs in his discard pile. Um, unless I'm miscounting his Pokemon in three, three, six. Uh, oh, three, six egg plus the other Ultra Ball. Oh no, the Zork makes sense then, yeah. Because he has another Ultra Ball in hand. Yeah, my bad. I was I was miscounting the Pokemon. So there's the prop back, Ultra Ball away, egg, and should be Psychic Energy here. Seems pretty useless to me. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea what I want there for a second. Getting rid of a Zork. I don't, I don't overly like that. Um, so he's going for the Trubbish here. Um, I think the Psychic Energy might be a little bit more useless, but I don't know if actually James plays Super Rod. He might just play Psychic Energy. He might just play like Stretcher plus Psy the one of Psychic Energy. It's pretty easy to not trade away what you want to keep or not get rid of what you want to keep as a Zorak player. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, props the egg back. Egg comes to the bench. And once again, this is why Suda was such a big deal. Um, John either didn't get it this game again or doesn't play it. I'm not sure. Um, but there's the Riotus beating for the knockout. I think I would have liked to have seen James special charge right there. Um, just in the off chance you get Ender red carded. Uh, yeah, I definitely would like to have seen James use the uh, special charge right there. Just in case you get Ender Red carded, you already have the DC back on the deck. Because if you do get Ender Red carded, you would definitely want the DC back in your deck. Even though it means you could po possibly get two with this one in the active. Yeah. Definitely would have liked to have seen him use the special charge there. Here we see the Super Rod from John. Uh, there's the San Azor coming back. Once again, I would like to have seen that stay uh, in his hand. Uh, but he's getting a little bit extra benefit at the Super Rod here. 
Another Zerua coming down. That looks good to me. Choice Band active. Should be via Seeker for Colrus. He's thinking about putting the Klefki on the guard, but he definitely wants to. You definitely want to go with a stand and knockout here, I think, as John. Maybe not. Maybe just going with a full bench shenanigans here is fine. Um, you could have gone Klefki to the guard, but bench was it like two or three more Pokemon out of hand? Uh, I think I like the stand in knockout here, though, from John. I think I like, prefer to see him take the knockout with this. Do you want to close out the game with the stand in knockout? No, I prefer to see him take the knockout. Uh, yeah, I prefer to see him take the knockout with the stand in here. Battle Compressor here from John. Ideally, you want to like close out the game. When, once you're behind like this, I think at this point with John, you want to close out the game with like Ability Lock Arb, Fuel Blower, Skyfield, put your own Skyfield in play, and knock out with a Zork GX at some point on probably John's next turn, actually. There's a prop trade from John. Uh, definitely want to see him prop his egg here and use that Ultra Ball, get a, another Trubbishers or Ruin to play. He did get the Stand in Zork, which is what we wanted to see. Um, he cannot evolve the top Zerua. He can evolve this bottom one, though. But yeah, I definitely want to see him get another uh, get another Zerua potentially in play. I don't know if he has any left. Uh, one could be prized for sure. Oh, he's going with the Zork GX. There's another prop trade. All right, there's the Zerua. So he's not going to go with the Stand in Zork here, which I think I would have liked to have seen him go with. Maybe it's not that big of a difference anyways with James at three prizes. Um... Still pull off the play I talked about with the Skyfield. Yeah, maybe it's not that big of a deal to go with Stand in over the other one, anyways. There's an Ultra Ball. Kind of just looking through his deck. Takes another Zork GX. Kind of the only thing left to grab. Could grab Lele, but it's kind of just worse than a Zork GX. So yeah, get the Zork GX. Has another one in hand, though. So maybe the Lele was a better grab, actually. He's out of Zerua here. So yeah, I think I would have grabbed the Lele then. Yeah, that makes no. Oh no, he's got another Zerua in hand. And he could just set up four Zork GXs potentially, so. Uh, there's DCE, Klefki to the Garb, and then the bench Pokemon should be coming down here. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine to grab Zork GX because you can create two more Zork GXs on your next turn. Yeah, I like that then, actually. I thought he was out of Zerua, but not quite. And then Riot is beating for the knockout on James' is active. Is active. Um, now we're to James' turn. And then this is, once again, why it's so that first prize card not being responded to with, with the Lele getting knocked is such a, is such a big deal because now James can just go into his own stand-in Zork. Um... And then put John on odd prizes. And then he just needs to find a way to draw one prize on his last turn. Um, he is, definitely wants to look through that play. Definitely want to see him go with the... See, now almost special charge for 2DC is almost like an overkill on the DC. You only need 2DC to close out the game. And now you have access to four. You don't really need them. Um, you kind of, you definitely just want to draw Stan and Zorak here if you're, uh, if you're James. I'm not sure what the problem is there. All right, they're back at it. Yeah, he's going to already go ahead and commit the DC to the Zerua. Um, very likely that he actually finds it here. And then the chorus should be coming out um, from James. There it is. He's drawing 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards. Super likely he either gets access to a Zorak GX Choice Band or ideally the stand-in Zorak and is able to take the knockout on the Zorak GX. Either way, we should be seeing this Zorak GX going down. I don't see this standing uh, standing at the end of this turn. We'll see. We've seen, uh, seen get people get more unlucky than this before. <laughs> it's gonna come with a one card cut here from John feeling it uh, There's the Zork GX So he does have that There's an ultra ball. So that should get the stand in Zork uh, an ability lock guard would actually be pretty good here, too from James uh, Take away more options from John on his turn. I don't see the ability lock guard though in hand uh, There's another Zerua that can be put onto the bench definitely want to see that hit the bench and then we should just see just see the uh, stand in Zork Come down on that Zerua, and then uh, I forget the name of the attack. Um, looks like he's eyeing up the Ultra Ball. I th did he draw? If he drew into the standing, he could actually Ultra Ball for that. Uh, Super out here coming for, out from James. It looks like it's Zorak, Zorak, Zerua. Nothing huge there. And another Zerua should be hitting the bench here. Maybe a Trubbish. I don't see, really see a reason to hit for a Trubbish at the bench. I doubt the item count is that high. Uh, probably want to get rid of a couple of the supporters. He looks like he's going to Ultra Ball away the Zerua, which means I think he's probably benching Trubbish. Definitely want to keep Sycamore. You could definitely get rid of the... Yeah, you definitely want to keep Sycamore. If you get end low, you want Sycamore as a draw out. You don't need Delinquent. You don't need Acerola. Thankfully, Delinquent hits the discard pile. They're both pretty useless. There's the stand-in Zorak. Um, so I think he's going to bench a Trubbish then here uh, from James. I imagine he's benching a Trubbish then. Um, if he's Ultra Balled away the Zerua, which I don't like. I don't like the Zerua... Ultra Ball away there. I definitely would like to have seen him keep that, uh, keep the Zerua there. 
Uh, even though even though he has this other one, which is looks like he's gonna come down. He's debating. Uh, looks like he's gonna have John count his items here. It might be pretty high actually. Ooh, that does look pretty high. I think the trash lunch probably will be coming down here then. Yeah, trash lunch does come down. Still would have liked to have seen him keep the Zeru, I think. Ultra Ball away the Ace Roll. I'll get that as an option through Via Seeker. I think he still has quite a few Via Seekers left, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, and a Burst Balloon onto the active uh, Stana Zorak to add insult to injury here. Uh, it's going to be super hard for John to deal with this this turn. Um, I think he needs to hit something along the lines of... I think John needs to hit something along the lines of, like, Field Blower, Sky Field, Ability Lock Garb, N... Yeah, and then DCE knockout. So not too ridiculous for him to hit. Debating what to get rid of here. Thinking about keeping Oracorio. I think that you won't never have time to use the, the Instructor Rangaroo. So I like this discard here from John. He's starting off with a trade. Has two other Zoroks in hand. Needs to find an N. Um, I don't know if he has any Via Seeker left. So um, I'm hoping he does. I'm hoping to see this game go a turn or two more. Uh, but we don't see a Via Seeker in hand. His hand is like all energy and pokemon third prop trade there's the via seeker last card dc dce active um i don't see a field blower which you also want to see here for him to discard the uh sky field in play there's the float zone to the garb yeah uh, yep there we go um yeah field blower to get rid of the sky field i yeah i think the choice man is actually better on a bench zorak here you don't next turn you're going to want to move this zorak out of the way because uh, it is going to take the 60 damage potentially from the burst balloon. So I would like to see this choice man on a bench Zorak here from John. Because um, you definitely yeah, you definitely want to move this Zorak out of the way on the next turn here from uh, from John. Um, yeah, so if yeah, if you if you don't if you whiff the field blower here, I don't even know if John has access to any more field blower. Um, you're going to take that 60 damage from the burst balloon, which means you don't want the Zorak chilling in your active anymore. So I definitely would like to see him <clears throat> put the choice man on the bench. Because you're going to be wanting... There's the field blower, though. Uh, very important... Uh, Pull here from John. Definitely want to see him get rid of that burst balloon and the sky field. Now it doesn't really matter if the choice band's on active, but you don't know you're going to draw that. So, thinking about it. Yep, there we go. Get rid of the sky field, get rid of the burst balloon. Sky field goes away. James now has to go down to five benched Pokemon. Shouldn't be too hard of a discard there. It looks like it's not. And then knock out the active here from John. James sends up. Floatstone, Orangaroo. I don't see what's in his hand. It's a Skyfield, top deck, a Trubbish. So really nothing going on here for James. It should be just Bench Trubbish Pass. Um, actually, I would... No, just Bench Trubbish Pass, yeah. Even Retreat to the Trubbish doesn't seem terrible. Keep the option of the Floatstone, I think, yeah. Retreat to Trubbish. Pass? I'm not sure what just happened. They are in turns now, so it should be turn one here for John. He needs to knock out a Trubbish and then knock out a GX on his next turn. It looks like he's pretty close with his current hand to be able to knock out a GX. He needs a couple more basic Pokemon, though. One, two, six, um, seven, eight. Yeah, he's close. He needs a couple more, though. Uh, he'll have to top deck a basic Pokemon as well as pull one off of his prize cards. He could get access to trades again. Actually, so he should be able to get it. I think that was turn one from John. He can get a field blower, field blower of his own garb, and then get another tool to put back on it. Um, there's a Garbodor top or a Zorak top deck here from James. So I think we should be able to see John take this game, actually. As long as John has one more turn. I'm actually not sure if John has another turn. So we have, first we have to see if John has another turn. He should. There's the draw. I think that might just be enough basic Pokemon in hand. One, two, three, four. Nope, not quite. He needs one more basic Pokemon. Uh, he has Dowsing Machine, so he has to go Dowsing Machine for Field Blower here, get rid of his own Floatstone, trade back into a Tool card, and he has the Via Seeker for the Guzma, and then he has Egg for another basic Pokemon. So he needs the Dowsing Machine, he has two Eggs for the Pokemon, so he just needs to find a Tool card, but he might be out of Tool cards. There's a choice in a Float in his, I probably only plays two Float, two Choice, so I don't think John can actually pull it off here. Um, I would imagine he only plays two Float, two Choice. Um, so he's actually just one turn short from probably winning this game. If he had one more turn, I'm sure he would be able to go knock out Orangaroo, then knock out the next Pokemon. Yep. And there's the scoop from John and unable to take the game. I'm actually really curious as to what James's next top deck was. Oh, they cut away right as James was about to flip it. Um, cause it's very, very possible that James could have still won that game. Um, if they had, even if John had an extra turn, 
Oh, I really was curious as to what that top deck was. But anyways, guys, that's round 15. See James walking away with a 2-0 over John. Um, definitely some misplays in the first couple games. Cleaner in the second game. Um, the games were almost mirrored, identical uh, in the plays that were made. Not exactly the Pokemon that were attacking and stuff, but the games were pretty close to being the same thing. Um, I mean, the early game dictates a lot of mirror matches, and the early games went out pretty identical. It was the first prize from James, John not being able to knock out a GX, and then James responding with a one-shot. Um, so the early games being pretty identical uh, led to uh, James getting an early lead in both games and almost being able to close it out in the first game and almost being able to close it out here in the second. But then, once again, N plus ability lock arb is a super strong combo, and it definitely shut him down there. Uh, John needed about one more turn, but we do see James walking away with the win here in round 15. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on the video. Just hit my mic. Uh, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is there any plays I missed? Is there anything I overthought? And uh, they were definitely correct when I wasn't. I know I'm not perfect. Um, links to my Twitch live stream as well as social media links in the description below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and peace.